Hi everybody, welcome back to part three of this double build of Airfix's brand new 148 scale fairy gannet. As you can see I've got both airframes on the bench painted and that's the stage that I'm going to be covering in this video. I'll also be talking a little bit about the scheme options, uh, two of the three scheme options that Airfix provide in the kit. The paint I'm using is AK's uh, Real Colours and that's RAF Sky and extra dark sea grey. I think during the video I'll make reference to dark sea grey but just for clarity the Gannet top surface is extra dark sea grey. One of the schemes that I've chosen is uh, quite complex in terms of masking and painting so uh, there's lots to do this week so we'll make a start. Okay so I'm going to start off this week by just tidying up the fuselages. You can see that I've given uh, these a coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500 grey and that really shows up the seam work and any corrections that you need to make. There's not too many with uh, this particular airframe. There's just a, one or two little bumps. The primer just gives you some clues as to what's not quite right. Uh, so they're all nice and smooth now. Now I'm going to reinstate the panel lines. Sanding them has removed them over the top of the fuselage and I like to use one of these little razor saws for that. The benefit of using these is that they're very manoeuvrable whereas the traditional scribers can be a bit bulky. Doesn't need much, we're not trying to make a big cut in these. Just enough to get the panel line back over the seam line. I also need to extend or reinstate the rivets over the top of the fuselage and for that I'm going to use this tool. This is from Radu Brinzan and it's basically a stainless steel holder with some little wheels in it and I've, uh, the set comes with I think four different size wheels for different rivet spacings and they just fit into a standard knife holder like that. They also do a larger diameter one but Again, they're a little bit more clumsy than these. These enable you to get right into, uh, for example, a wing to fuselage joint. It goes right up like that. Obviously, a bigger diameter wheel wouldn't allow you to do that. And again, I don't want to put enormous holes in this. So just very lightly over the top of the fuselage. The uh, airfix rivets under a coat of primer are very subtle so we don't want to have these out of place by making them too deep. I like to do this work after I've put the first coat of primer on because the primer just helps you see things a little bit more clearly. So I'm happy with that, looks alright. I'll give it another quick squirt with the primer just to check. So that's alright, we can uh, put that to one side now, ready for painting and move on to the wings. So again I've primed the wings, this is obviously the full span wing and one of the things that I like to do is to make sure that the panel lines run along the leading edge or over the leading edge. And again, just use a little saw to do that. That's it, that's all it takes. 
Now the only other thing to do with these is to sort out these parts which are the wing tips and as you can see they're in clear plastic and that's to allow the accurate moulding of the navigation light on the end. And I think this is a much better way of going about things because especially with a navigation light that's as small as this it would be very difficult to mould accurately a part uh, that would fit in that so that's going to make a much neater job. The other massive improvement in this kit is the fit of the landing lights. They're more or less a push fit and when I think back to the last airfix kit that I built which was a hurricane the uh, landing light covers on that were terrible fit so this is a big advance and those are our two lamp transparencies this is just a dab of silver paint just to back up that landing light lens And the same with the reverse of the wing tip. So that uh, silver there will just enable the clear green or clear red just to sparkle a little bit. Just cleaning up the folded wings. Um, these have been dry for around about five days now so that's good the glue will have set completely so that just reduces the danger of getting any ghost seams on the parts just finish them off polish them up a little bit the seams with a fine sanding sponge and uh, they're ready for some primer I'm skipping about a bit here because I want to fit the transparencies now onto the wings now that they've been primed I've decided to fit them mask them off and paint them and usually that gives a better result uh, it makes the transparencies look as though they're part of the aircraft rather than added on at the end so wherever I can I prefer to do that These are the one piece wing tips which have the tiny light at the end, the navigation light. And one thing that I did with these when I was test fitting them uh, was to just make sure that the wing tip is sanded flush with the aileron. And that's because if you don't do that there's a chance that you get too big a gap on the wing tip to aileron join. So just adjust that until you get a nice even line there at the end which is similar to the inboard side of the aileron. And the other thing is that this part can move around, it's got a little bit of play in it so just be careful to get the profile uh, the same as on the wing profile. But apart from that we're okay ready to go. So uh, that's gone in all right, it's all nice and flush. Get the leading edge landing light on now. Just take care to get the correct one of these because they're actually handed port and starboard. They're a slightly different shape. This is one area where the new style of sprue gate comes in really useful because it's on the mating surface of the transparency and not on the actual surface itself. So you don't get a scar on the transparency. And they're much easier to clean up.
these are a tight enough fit that they really don't need any glue they'd stay in there if you were careful and again just make sure that they're positioned accurately if you get them in exactly the right position they go perfectly flush with the leading edge of the wing and even though it's such a tight fit I will make sure by just adding a spot of glue to the transparency just to make sure so that's all good I'll do the port side now just give them a little clean up when the glue's set just doing those last few little jobs prior to the first coats of paint and what I want to do is gather all the bits and pieces together that I'm going to need for the sky. There's quite a lot of uh, sky paint to go on this aircraft. So uh, in a moment I'll be doing the bomb bays and all the undercarriage bay covers as well. But uh, just to finish the fuselage off prior to its first coat of sky, uh, we have a little job to do to drill out a couple of holes on the spine of the aircraft and I need to do this on both of my airframes and this is for a piece that goes on the spine and it's an option in the airfix kit. In the first option in the kit option A uh, you need to drill a hole a single hole on the spine and it gives you a distance in the instructions from the rear of the cockpit here but both of my versions need this adaptation and we get this template which uh, clips onto this moulding here on the spine and it gives the position of two holes that we need to drill. So I've got a 0.8 drill in the motor tool And then into those holes we fit this part H9. Get all those other parts ready now. The uh, Bombay doors are a two part assembly. So although these parts don't really come into the build until a bit later on, uh, I always like to try and get the parts that I'm going to need to paint the same colour, particularly fuselage parts, doors and so on. Uh, I like to get them painted together for a couple of reasons really. The first is that you've already got the paint mixed up in the airbrush you're not swapping and changing colours all the time or as much but the other one the other reason is that for some parts you like to match up the exact shade so for example with the wings where I'm going to paint them uh, before assembly uh, it's just good to be able to match up the exact uh, density of paint that you've applied from the wing to the fuselage otherwise if you do them completely separately just one extra coat that you might make uh, can just give a different shade altogether and when you put the parts together it shows up so I try to match everything up by painting everything in the same painting session so again we've got a really nice fit of the inner and outer Bombay door. Now for some reason here I've got a very weird warp in this bay door and for a moment I thought it was a really subtle piece of moulding but it doesn't appear on the other side. So I'm not sure what's going on there it's just a twist in the mould for some reason. So I'm going to have to clamp that fairly heavily 
to see if I can get it to close up. Fortunately, it's not that obvious. It's only when you really look along the uh, line of the door that you can see that it's twisted. So I'll clamp it really tightly and glue it up. Hopefully that won't be too obvious. So I'll leave that to set for a while. Be interesting to see if it's present on the other kit. So I can tell you that uh, the other kit is absolutely fine. So it's just a one-off. Hopefully you're not going to have any problems with yours if you're building the kit. Under carriage bay doors next. So the uh, remainder of the parts that I'm going to need to paint sky all prepared. So um, I'll get them primed up and then we'll take a look at the paint I'm going to be using for the model. Now the last thing that I personally think is worth doing, but it, uh, it depends on the individual modeler I think, is whether or not to drill out the little vents the air scoops here that go along the side of the fuselage and there's some uh, exits, some little exhausts as well facing backwards in a couple of positions. I think it is worth doing but it is a little bit risky because if you manage to get these wrong and destroy the scoops you've got an awful lot of work to reconstruct them. So I would only suggest doing this if you're confident that you can drill them out otherwise you can ruin a fairly expensive model. So I'm marking out the position that I want to start the drill. The only way that Airfix could reproduce these scoops is to provide them as separate parts but I'm not sure that it's that noticeable. You can see them on photographs but the mouldings as they are are pretty good. And the other thing that you could do if you're not that confident uh, of drilling these out is just to paint the faces of the scoops with a little bit of black paint. And that'd do probably just as good a job. So I think that improves the look a little bit, but as I said, it's not essential I don't think, and it is quite a risky procedure. Okay, so with everything ready on the wings, I can get the undersides painted in the sky, and I'm going to be using these AK colours for the schemes on both aircraft. And if you saw the uh, Tempest build that I did recently, you'll know that I, that was my first try with AK colours and it wasn't completely successful. Uh, the ocean grey on the Tempest wasn't right at all. Uh, and I scrapped it in uh, favour of using some Tamiya uh, paint. But these two colours from AK don't look too bad. Uh, and in fact I've already used some of the sky on the tailplanes here and really it's a shame about the issues with colours uh, occasionally with AK because the finish is really nice the paint dries to a lovely sort of eggshell sheen to them now I apply this paint 
uh, mixed uh, about 50% with uh, AK's own high compatibility thinners. And in this case, it's taken about three coats, three very thin coats, uh, to get the sort of colour density that I want. Uh, one thing that I found you have to be a little bit more careful than, say, using Tamiya paints when you're using AK is to make sure that the coverage is the same across the model, particularly when you're uh, painting individual parts like this rather than an entire airframe. So after each coat, I'm checking this against the fuselage colour that I've already got on as well. Uh, but uh, gradually you will build the colour up to what it's meant to be and the finish is really nice as I've said. So I'm going to press on and do the rest of the sky. There's a lot to do with all the undercarriage doors and so on. But the next job is to do the uh, unfolded wing. And I've masked off the uh, navigation lights and the landing lights on the leading edge. So I'll get over to the spray booth now and get the sky on and hopefully I'll get this to match with the fuselage. I'll show you when that's done. If you've not used AK paints before and I'm getting used to them uh, at the moment, I've only used them a couple of times, you might be a bit worried about this effect. I don't know whether you can see it on the back here just behind the wheel well. where you get this patchy uh, colour, much paler than the actual colour that you're trying to put on. And that's just because there isn't enough coverage. Uh, what you're actually looking for, and when you can gauge that you've got the right coverage, is more the finish that you get rather than the colour. So what you're looking for is to get an overall satin eggshell sheen, whereas this is very matte. Uh, so it needs more paint on that area. So it's just a case of going over it again. Uh, possibly in multiple coats. This will probably need three altogether. Uh, until you get that overall eggshell sheen on the wing in this case. And at that point the colour will become a lot more uniform. So I'll go back to it. We'll get this uh, coated again. See if we can improve on that finish. So as you can see, the coverage is a lot better now and we've started to get that uniform finish all over the wing panel. So that's okay for the sky. We've got it on the fuselages as well. They've come out really nice and uh, we need to think now about the colour schemes on the two options that I'm doing and uh, see if we can get these masked up ready for the dark sea grey top surfaces. Okay, just uh, talk a little bit about the uh, schemes that I'm going to be doing for these two airframes. The first one is this, which is option C in the kit uh, from 847 Naval Air Squadron based in Cyprus during the Suez Crisis in 1957. And the obviously distinctive feature of the airframe is the stripes on the wings and on the rear fuselage, a bit similar to invasion stripes uh, during 1944, during the war. And there is a bit of debate about the colour of these stripes because normally during the Suez crisis, uh, RAF and Fleet Air Arm aircraft were marked with yellow and black bands. But there is a pretty clear colour photograph of this airframe uh, which suggests to me that these were white and Airfix do give the option in the colour callouts for white or yellow. So I'm going to be using white. And what I want to do first of all before I apply any of the dark sea grey is to mark out the areas of the stripes and paint the white in. Uh, mask that off and then do the uh, dark sea grey. I can add the black stripes later on. Uh, the other option, which is going to be a bit more straightforward, is option B. This is going to be for the folded wing version that I'm building. And this is for 815 Naval Air Squadron boarded on HMS 
Ark Royal in 1958. So that's a little bit more straightforward. The first job is to get the areas of the stripes masked off. And to do that, I've done a photocopy or a scan of the Airfix decal sheet. And that's to allow me to cut out the uh, roundels and the serials and so on. Uh, so that I can get the right sort of dimensions for the stripes. So it'll probably be easier to show you what I mean by demonstrating. And I just want to make sure I get the correct airframe. So this is the Ark Royal one. And this is the Cypress one. With the pilots in. You just feel them in there. So that's everything masked up ready for the white. I've not put the demarcations of the white on the top because the dark sea grey will cover the border up on that. I'll just uh, miss some white in in the rough area of the uh, stripes. So I'll get over to the spray booth get that white on. These uh, black and white bands are six millimeters which 
is handy for 6mm masking tape, Tommy masking tape, but the full 6mm tape won't go around the compound curves on this rear fuselage, so I'm using two threes. And because they're thinner, they're just a bit more flexible. So at times like this when you're messing around trying to get these stripes all aligned properly that uh, you wonder whether or not it might have been better to choose one of the other options in the kit but hopefully it'll be worth it when it's done These strips are just really markers to show me where to apply this central white band. So that takes quite a bit of time to mark out, accurately anyway. And I'll get some black on. I'm not going to be using a jet black on that. I'll use rubber black, Tamiya rubber black, just to tone it down a little bit. Uh, but before I do that, I'll just mask off the wings, then we'll come back and do the unmasking for the fuselage and the wings together. Okay, I think we're ready to go. I'll get the rubber black on, then we'll get this unmasked. In the end with this paintwork I decided to use NATO black which is just a shade darker than the rubber black that I thought I was going to use. Yeah, so I think uh, that's pretty good considering the complexity of the masking on that. So there's uh, just one or two little shadows here and there but nothing really to worry about. So uh, quite an interesting scheme and uh, hopefully worth the effort. Okay, the next step is the dark sea grey on the top surfaces of both airframes. So I've masked them off again. I've got through uh, plenty more masking tape on this model. And as with the sky, I'm using AK's extra dark sea grey, which is, uh, from my eye anyway, a good match for the colour. So we'll get some of this mixed up get these top surfaces done then we'll finally unmask both models okay let's see how we've done with the masking it is quite a tricky fuselage to mask off properly because of the vents along the side they're very close to the masking line so it's hard to get the masking tape tight down
So that's uh, pretty good overall. There's one or two bits of overspray. I'll just have to go back in with some of the sky. But I know that this paint blends really well, so I'm not too concerned about that. And the finish with these AK paints is really nice. Nice and uh, silky smooth. So I'll get the wings done. And again, the hardest set of wings to mask off are the ones with the uh, stripes on them. So I'll start with those. Okay, so that's all the extra dark sea grey areas painted up. And generally, given the amount of masking that's involved with all these, the amount of touch-ups that I'm going to have to do is pretty small. There's one or two little areas. The Tamiya Black has pulled a little bit under the masking tape here, so they'll need touching up again. But uh, generally, that's uh, pretty good session really. So I'll do those touch-ups uh, for the next episode and I'll also give them uh, both airframes a coat of Tamiya lacquer gloss. That's just to make sure I think this AK paint as you can see it's dry to a lovely nice sheen and I think they would probably take decals as they are but I'm going to make absolutely sure and give it that coat of Tamiya gloss. Uh, and get these ready for the decal stage which I'll do in the next episode. So that'll be coming up uh, pretty soon early on in January I should think and hopefully you've had a great Christmas and you're looking forward to the new year. So thanks again for joining me everybody and look after yourselves. See you next time. Bye for now.